on this third Sunday of Easter, as we mentioned earlier, we find ourselves led to today's message found there in the book of Revelation, the book of eschatology, the study of last things, mm -hmm. eschatology. Being the final book in the New Testament, of course, and uh, I think my brother here is reading. We're reading on. Not just to yield with the angels and kneel with them, and not to just see loved ones who've gone, but not just to drink at the fountain under the great white throne, not all the crowns that he giveth, that I'm running this race. All I will want up in heaven is just to behold his face. Not just to join the chorus and sing with those that are blessed and bathe my soul that is weary in the sea of heavenly rest. But I'll look for the one who saved me from a death of sin and disgrace. Be all that I want up in heaven is just to behold his face. Just to behold his face. Just to behold his face. All I will want up in heaven is just to behold his face. Let us pray. Kind and loving and gracious Heavenly Father, that is the desire of the speaker's heart. And we know that it is the desire of many, 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 many more just to see your face. But we know, dear God in heaven, that before that is done, before it comes to pass, you have told us some things that we will go through and pass through until that time takes place in the future. So God will erect and lead and speak through me as I speak this message on today. Make it clear, thy word, thy gospel, thy truth, may it be known and heard on this day and heard in such a way that it will be spoken and will be received, obeyed, and lived by the hearers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In reading this wonderful passage on today, I want to ask you to consider allowing me to go back to the previous chapter, just for one or two verses, so that we can bring to your remembrance, because we know that you are aware of all of this, but your remembrance a little bit about the message on today, which is entitled, we shall behold him. We notice that we heard some words and some passages and some phrases here which are not quite everyday speaking among us. But we are reminded that we need to be cognizant and it is possible for us to be aware uh, of what is here said because it is extremely important to us, to everyone, to be aware. God has been good enough to us to share with us in his word everything that we need to know in order to wind with him in eternity. Because it is a known fact that we shall all spend eternity somewhere. Yeah. We have, a, you know, we have the saying, um, I wonder where I'm going to spend. Where am I going to spend eternity? Oh, in heaven. Well, we take for granted, but there is another side to eternity as well. Everybody we know wants to be in eternity with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in order to do that and to avoid the opposite, we need to be in the Lord's word. And I know we are aware of that. So today we are going to have the temerity and we have asked our Lord and Savior to help us to speak through us the words which he would have you to hear. 
John is the writer of our passage today, this chapter. John was one of the selected disciples of Jesus when Jesus walked this earth, as we know. But here we see John writing, and he has been told to write of things past, present, and future. This is what he is covering on today. Right. We know that when he spoke of the past, John was living, John was writing from the Isle of Patmos, mm -hmm. modern day Turkey. He was writing there because he had been exiled to the Isle of Patmos because the Roman emperor at that time sent him there, exiled him there because what? He was preaching the word. Mm -hmm. So therefore, he was there. Now, John was told to write of things past. Mm -hmm. So he is speaking of the things past, which had to do specifically with Jesus Christ. Because this book, as far as we, we can go back to Genesis from that matter, and from Genesis to Revelation, the central theme of the Bible is Jesus, right. Jesus Christ. So when John was told to write of things past, he was writing, as we said, AD 96. So he was speaking of Jesus Christ and his crucifixion past to him was AD 33. Mm -hmm. That is when Jesus Christ, as we know, was crucified. So John is speaking of Jesus Christ here in the past. But he's speaking of the present because he was told to write the things which you have seen, the present. And then he was told to write of those things which are to be, which will be the future. And we have all of that enrolled in this particular book of Revelation. So just wanted to bring that to your attention as we go. John, the inspired writer here, is commanded, as we said, to write of those things, three classes of things, things which he had seen there on the Petmos vision, past, present, and the future. Now, in reference to the seven seals scroll, which is read about, I'd like you to note that it was rolled up paper, as we might take, you know, and just roll up something, mm -hmm. and this would be the parchment larger than this, of course. We have rolled up things, and rolled up things can be unrolled. Mm -hmm. But John was told, and he wept, and he cried, and he cried, and he cried, and he continued to shed tears when John was told that there was no one worthy to open the scroll mm -hmm. and read from it. Mm -hmm and he wept. Mm -hmm. Now, he was not weeping, we don't think, because he was wanting the question answered for someone to tell him, well, oh, I thought you were gonna tell me who one somebody's gonna read. No, that wasn't why. He was crying, we believe, because there was no one, and it was read in your presence that there was no one in heaven who was worthy to read and open the scroll. There was no one on earth worthy and there was no one under the earth. Mm -hmm. No, there are some people who would be under the earth that say like uh, Judas perhaps, perhaps some other fallen persons, sinners, there would be people. And among all of those, wherever they were located, there was no one worthy to break the seals and read from the scroll. But then as John was crying and weeping and continuing to shed tears, one of the elders came to him and told him, mm -hmm. that's right, what did he tell him? That thou, there is someone oh, yes. who has prevailed right. and is worthy. The one who is worthy to receive praises, honor and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing is of course, as we know, Jesus Christ. He was the one, the only one worthy to break the seals and read from the scroll. Who is worthy was the question. So now we know that mm. there is one and that was spoken with a loud voice when the angel said, 
one has been found to be worthy. And therefore, he was able to stop his weeping as he received the message that there is one who is worthy. Amen. He's known as the root of David because we know that Messiah, Jesus Christ, is in the line of David. And David's line was a royal line. Right. So therefore, we know that he's from the root of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we know that he is informed that when he looked, he was told to look. And when he did look, he saw a lion. Not expecting to see the lion, he expected to see a lamb. Because he was told that the only person worthy to receive and open that scroll was Jesus Christ. Right. But therefore we see that Jesus maintains and fulfills many roles, not just that of the Savior Jesus Christ. We have the image of him as a lion, lion representing royalty. Mm. We have the image of him representing the lamb, which his life was from the beginning when he walked this earth. He was known as a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. And that is because he came here as the Savior. He's the only one that we know of whose name was given to him before he was born. He's the only one that we knew or know of who was able to take that scroll and read it because of his worthiness. He has died. He has redeemed us. And we see now that he is being honored and is being blessed in order to read from that scroll. Mm -hmm. He had already achieved the victory. Right. And therefore, he alone, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he alone was able to break those seals and read from the scroll. Amen. Though he was introduced as a lion, John saw a lamb. Mm -hmm. That lamb appeared to be slain. Mm -hmm. And we know the lamb, Jesus Christ, was indeed slain. Right. He was a sacrificial lamb. Right. His sacrificial atonement is what paid our sin debt Amen. for each one of us with his death on the cross. Yet the lamb was not standing beside the throne or behind it. He was standing in the throne. Mm. My friends, you see the lion and the lamb are the same, mm. referring to Jesus Christ. It's referring to his first coming. He was known, as we said, as a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. And we know the struggles and the strifes and the, and the uh, denial and betrayal and all that took place in the life of Jesus Christ as he came to be our Savior. In fact, he was told to be named. The angel told him to name him Jesus, Amen. for he will save his people. So he came there to be the Lamb. Therefore, he had the appearance of a lamb when John looked and saw him standing there. He is the sovereign of the whole world, and that speaks of his second coming. Now, we are living between two advents. The first advent, when Jesus first came to this earth, and the second advent, when he is yet to come in the future. So we are between the two. We know the word Advent means coming. We spoke of his first coming. We know of that. And we look forward to his second coming. When he comes a second time, however, he's not going to come as the meek, lowly, humble right, person that he came the first time to save us. He's not coming for that this time. When he comes a second time, he will come as a judge, no first time as Savior, we have the opportunity to be saved. He wants to save us. He did what he could do. He shed his blood mm -hmm. for the redemption of our sins. He paid right. the sin debt, the debt that we could not pay, the debt that we owe. He paid it for us yeah. when he died there on the cross. Yeah. We've got this time in between now to be reconciled to him, to appreciate what he did for us. Mm -hmm. So that when he comes as judge, 
we will not be recipients of the wrath of God, mm -hmm. which we are due. When he comes, that second time is judge. This is what we're speaking of here in this message to today. We know now also that the Lamb triumphed because when Jesus went to the cross and we just, we just celebrated and commemorated his death during Easter time, his mm -hmm. death, burial, and resurrection, that was a victory Amen. which he attained for us. Right. He achieved for us there on the cross. Mm -hmm. The Lamb, our Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sacrificed for us, paying our sin debt, being the one whose precious blood now is in heaven. We read also that the scroll was taken by the Lamb. When he took the scroll, he was worshipped. And we read there in that verses 8 of the fifth chapter there, beginning with verse 8, this is what we hear, what we read. And when he had taken the book, the living creatures, four and twenty elders, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps, golden vials, full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And then dealing with this lesson and learning about it and trying to get ready to prepare to present something to you, I found out something that the prayers of the saints, that is, those of us, when we pray to Jesus Christ, they are retained by him. Every prayer that you have prayed, no matter how long ago, how often or whatever, the prayers of the saints, and we are his saints, we are the saints, our prayers are retained and they are as a sweet smelling fragrance to Jesus Christ. And I thought that was a wonderful thing to know and hear because, you know, we, where are your prayers? Pray the prayer, okay, I'll go ahead and I'm going on about my business until I pray again. But keep that in mind, the prayer, every prayer that you pray is, is as a sweet savor to him and he keeps the prayers of all of his saints. Then we read in that ninth verse that they sung a new song, those that are around the throne sung a new song, mm. that he is worthy take that book and open the seals. Oh, well. He has redeemed us, that is Jesus, has redeemed us Amen. to God by his blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Mm -hmm. Think about that. All of the people there, now the last census tells, there are seven and a half billion people now on earth. Oh, well. So when we see this number, that God has redeemed us. Jesus has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred. How many would that be? Out of every tongue, out of every people, and every nation. And we shall reign with him on earth. Then we see in that verse 11, I beheld and heard the voice of many angels the number of them, here we go with numbers again, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Right. And what are they doing? Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Every creature which is in heaven Every creature on earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea, and all that are in them are saying blessing, yes. honor, yes. glory, yes. and power mm -hmm. be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. This is future, my friends. Yeah. This is telling us what you will be doing in the future. Yeah. You're not just reading about some kind of, you know, thought of story. Yeah. This is the word of God, and this is telling yeah. you about the future, which you and I will partake of, yeah. as Man. well as all of those who have gone on before. Yeah. And we see that they tell them now, that they fell down and worshiped him that liveth 
forever and ever. For Jesus Christ, without beginning and without ending of days. So therefore, we can look forward to worshiping him, and giving him praise and honor and glory throughout eternity. How long is that? I have no idea. None of us has any idea about the time at all. All we can do is while we are here now walking on this earth, we are making our choices. We are making our decision right now because when time gives way to eternity for each one of us, it will be too late. No longer will the Savior want to stand by you and help you and whatever he has done in the past to see that you spend eternity with him. It will be too late. Decision will have been made and it will not be changed. And as we said earlier, he's coming the next time. You see, uh, we read there in 2 Corinthians that we shall all, all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things done in the body. And that's what we are in now. We are in our what? Body right now. And there's no evading it. There's no avoiding it. He says we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things done in our body according to what we have done, whether it was good or bad. So that, that's, what, that's going to finalize it right then and there. Right now is the time for your choice and your decision. Uh -huh. You said now that the word revelation, and we didn't say this, but it really means an unveiling. What is Jesus doing? He's unveiling the future for us. Not, no secrets. You don't need to wonder about it or make up anything dramatic whatsoever. He wants us to know. That is because of his goodness to us. He lets us know that this is going to happen. This is going to take place. And we do not doubt his word. I'm sure of that. Why was no one found worthy to break the seals and read from the scroll. Well, one reason is because man has been disobedient to God. Back in the very earliest, in the Garden of Eden, God was told, told man to have dominion over the earth. That was over all things, have dominion. You read there in first uh, Genesis 1, 28, I hope it is. God created man, God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the earth, and, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. Now, I want to take you from that command for man to have dominion over the earth and whatnot. And let's go to Matthew, where we see that Jesus Christ spent those 40 days in the wilderness. And he was there accompanied by our good friend Satan, well, our bad friend Satan. Oh, well. <laughs> and one of those uh, testings that Satan confronted Jesus with he took him up to this high um, pillar, I guess we could say, thank you, <laughs> all right? Took him up on this high, high place and had Jesus told him to look at all of those kingdoms of the earth. Look, look about you. Look at all the splendor of them. He said, now, I will give those to you if you will just bow down and worship me. Now, mm -hmm. if you remember, Jesus did not dispute the fact that Satan could give him those dominions and those kingdoms. Mm -hmm. He did not, because we know what happened is there was the fall. And at the fall, what happens? They went ahead, disobeyed God. So they lost the ability to have dominion over the earth. Mm -hmm. And it passed on to the prince of the power of the air, who is Satan. So when he tells Jesus, I will give you all of those kingdoms of the earth, all you have to do is worship.
worship me. Jesus did not say, those are not yours. They were giving their mind. He didn't argue with them one bit. He just told him that I did not worship. I'm told to worship God. And Satan left him for a season, for a short period of time. So that is the explanation as to why uh, the scroll could not be broken and read by anyone else. Mm -hmm. And the most, because all the people at that time, those who were given that, they were dead. And he explicitly said that there was no one under the earth, no one on the earth, and no one in heaven, but Jesus Christ himself who was worthy to read from the scroll. Right. We know that uh, there is a war that continually goes on between the two greatest powers that are, and the main one, of course, is Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's a war going on between God and Satan at all times. Mm -hmm. And this war continues because Satan wants to, he is rather the adversary. And he has shown that he wants to be in the place where God is. That's why God, you see, Satan started off as Lucifer in heaven. That's where he started. But he wanted to usurp the place of God, and so therefore he was picked up, and he winds up down here on earth still competing as he deals. He is to win. competing with God. But we know that he can only go as far as God allows Satan to go. The things which he does is because of the permissive will of God. But at some point, the will of God will be tried to its very end, and that will be the last judgment, because we know Satan will wind up in the pit forever and forever. So, my friends, the invitation is that now is the time to decide, make your decision while you are in the body. Right. Now is the time to do that. Remember, we shall all stand before him. There's no way you can break that uh, command. But we know also that beside that time when we stand before him, we've told, been told that during the judgment, uh -huh. once it is upon us, yes. once it has begun, he says, behold, I come quickly. Yes. Now, the quickly doesn't mean immediately right now. The quickly means that he will come suddenly. But now we have, we have, <clears throat> with the comings, let's know, there is not only the final judgment, but there is the rapture. And that will, that's the next thing on the schedule of the creator, God. You won't see the word rapture in your Bible. You will see caught up, but it's the same difference. And I'm sure you've read it, you've heard it in many funerals, particularly, where we shall all see him. And that is why we get this term, we shall behold him. You're going to be to behold him when you stand before him to give an account, yes. or you will behold him yes. when he comes in the clouds of the air. Because just as he went away yes. from the uh, ascension, and rose into them, was turned up and exalted into glory by God, he is going to come again in like man, which means he's coming with clouds. And when he comes, he is only coming to the clouds. And those who have died before will go before the living ones, and they will receive first. And then those who are still on the earth will be changed in a moment, yeah. in the quickening of the time. Yes. And so shall we always be with the Lord. That's the rapture. Yes. And we never know when that's going to be. He hasn't told us when. That could be tomorrow. That could be tonight. That could be next month. But he is coming. coming. And that's another time when yes. you will not be able to change right. it at all. Right. We are going because he is in control of yes. all things and in command. He is sovereign, as we know.
And then there's that last time, that second coming. That is when the judgment will take place. All right. So Lord Jesus, we say, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Yes. And as he comes, we pray our prayer. Is that all now listening and all who have not done so will yield to him and receive and accept him as Lord and Savior of our lives now and forevermore that we may spend eternity with him, knowing that indeed we shall behold him face to face. Amen. Thank you.